Okay, so this um, is more of a discussion than a really a uh, presentation and such. Because it's based on my personal experience and how I hear it from my friends and families. Like, I've been, I, I just started work recently. It's a, it's a permanent job. I've been working and going home and I think it's more of a, it's become modern day slavery for me. And from, I, I don't, it's, I, I, I don't live on a minimum wage. So what I can afford and what I can do with my life is still relatively comfortable for me. But what if I was working as a security guard or cleaner, earning maybe a thousand a month? Half of my half of my pay will probably go to my rent. So what I heard from my colleagues, they are from Malaysia. So they are paying about eight six hundred dollars for a month in a room. And what so even if they are earning thousand dollar a week, uh, I mean a month, so they were just paying, using half of their salary to pay for the rent, and four hundred goes to food, traveling, entertainment if they have any, and most of them are working from a eight to eight job, like it's a child hour job, and as a maybe in an MNC, it will be much better, but most of Singaporeans will be working in SME. And it's where profits are getting eaten up by the bosses or such. I mean, it's 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 co it's, co it's normal. It's common. It's normal. It's common to have have more profit and such. But where do we draw the line on the boss having too much of what they are having? Like there's a there's a Hawkins saying, the boss are living in penthouses while the workers are living in hospitals and clinics and such. And even for a there's there's no minimum poverty line in Singapore. We can't determine say oh he's poor he needs more help. People themselves got to go get help from the government. And I have an uncle who's a drug addict. He sort of um, came out of his rehab rehab. And he's trying to look for jobs. I mean there's, there's no jobs as well. So where do we actually draw the line for making say, say, saying that people are living below the poverty wage and how do we actually go and help them and what do you think of working 8 to 5 every day going home sleep go again then the weekends come you're like oh uh, I, I'm going to do something with my life but then most of the time I'll be work, ending up or sleeping at home using computer and then recycle again yeah so is there any Thoughts that uh, at least I have a computer, you know. <laughs> Most of my colleagues are having just they, at least they own a smartphone, but they don't really have a data to use. Yeah. Isn't a question more of the routine that you're putting yourself into every day? I mean, the routine is caused by what they are limited by. Yeah. But I mean, uh, if you're relatively well off, you yeah. don't have to follow. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Is sure. Sort of part of your routine, Definitely. You don't have to go Definitely, definitely. I mean, if, if you have the finan financial freedom to do that, of course you can escape out of the circle. But then, how many people in Singapore or around the world are having that financial freedom? I know friends who are relatively well off with a so-called silver spoon. I mean, they are quite humble, but they, they have the freedom to choose, oh, I'm going to go do artist draw for a living, you know? For, for most of us in the in, in middle income, we, I mean, we still have the choice to do it, but we're quite limited by the time that we do it. Oh, I mean, you can, yeah, you can sure, you can sleep just, you can work 16 hours a day and sleep for four hours and go back to work again. But who really wants to live that life? That, you know, working 16 hours a day and sleeping four hours and living only two hours to do stuff. It's not, it's, it's not the same as our parents' generation. The world has changed. I mean, the wage gap, income gap, has been has been increased quite a lot. Um, uh, my my dad, as a ship mechanical, he can work alone and support the whole family. But if I was to work alone, on uh, my 2.5k wage, how am I going to support the family? Pay for the house? I, even if I don't want to own a car, I mean, it doesn't make sense for me to own a car as well. 
uh, I think what many people might forget is that it takes one generation to get there. So going back to your the example of your friend who yep. won the silver spoon, yep. so uh, he has it well, yep. but uh, it might have been his parents or his grandparents Definitely. who have been through this, this whole cycle yep. before. Yeah. Yeah, so it's when if we don't lead that, are we going to blame our parents for hey why not why did you not invest in the shares of Google when it just came out? Uh, maybe not, but if you want to change, then you have to be the generation to hustle to them. And yeah, I mean, then we are stuck on the so-called the millennium versus millenn the Y versus X generation. No, or the, or, I mean my dad just like hey, why don't we just go work? I mean. You know, you can just go work. I, I supported my family and supported you when I was 25 years old. You no, know, they, they don't understand that we have our challenges that they faced as well. I mean, it's, it's a different challenges, but they don't understand that we, as a younger generation, are facing people who are working longer hours. And technology are replacing some of our workers. So we're not actually getting paid so much equally. Even because there's, there's technology helping us, so we are doing more, but not paid more. So, how are we going to, to answer this um, salary wage problem? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Can you start again? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking about the, the group of people, uh, especially the lower income people, young people. Yep. Um, so a lot of them are stuck in eight to five jobs, which often extend to eight to nine and all that. Yeah. And so there's one group who feel that this is, there's not much choice. They're just stuck in this and you, know, you can't break out of it. Then there are others who then try to break out of it either by doing side jobs or yep. uh, trying to start a business. In Singapore, you have a whole bunch of people running courses mm -hmm. to basically help you get rich quick. <laughs> forex, <laughs> forex trading, property investment, blah, blah, blah. blah, yep, blah, yep, blah. Yep. So a lot of people then are for investing a couple of thousand dollars to attend these and then uh, maybe some of them do get rich quick, but I suppose most of them just Get poorer. I mean, if I was holding a class on how to get rich, but why would I hold a class if I'm really rich? <laughs> That's the irony in it. They, as well. they will say, or oh, they, they've gotten successful now, they want to share. Share the wealth and such. Yeah. I mean, if the world was so ideal that we, that people actually share their wealth, we wouldn't have so many of such society problems around. I mean, I see old people still working through their life, picking up cardboard boxes. And okay, of course, um, I heard the news that oh, it's for exercising. No, it's not. It's not for. It's not for income. It's for exercise. They're just making part of their life. But then, if I were to, at that age, still picking up car box, what kind of quality of life are we giving our people actually? I mean, this is just facts of life. You see that everywhere, not just here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The US, even in Tokyo. I mean, in Tokyo, Hong Kong is even worse. Yeah, you, there's, you, there's much more. Or, or you go to Osaka, there's a really bad place, this thing in Osaka, where you see all the homeless people down there. Yeah. But why? I mean, the average wealth of us has increased, you know? But the wealth gap has also Yeah, the wealth gap, that's the problem. The, the wealth is not so called. Average wealth is a very useless measure. <laughs> yeah, it's not medium wealth, it's average wealth. Exactly. That's the problem. But as I said, Bill Gates walks into this room. Yeah, it's like it's like if I went to a gym with a bunch of fit people, I'm actually healthier. But in reality I'm not. So are we gonna keep going on with this capitalism problem? I mean society? No problem. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is median wealth in Singapore has also increased. I okay. I I work subtly. I work recently, so I contribute to my family wealth. That increase. Household yeah, household income. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly, has a spike, a jump for your house. Yeah. Over the twenty last twenty last twenty thirty years, Singapore, every Singapore actually did benefit from the growth. Yeah, but what about those lagging behind? I mean, averagely, we are all doing better. I mean, I'm not complaining about the food that I'm having. I'm wearing proper shoes, proper shorts, good clothes. 
<laughs> but what were those people lagging behind? The thing is, how, to what extent do we want? Do we want to go to the extent that we spoil the party for everybody? Like socialism? Yeah. I mean, if, if we were to do socialism, it would be bad as well. But how do we... Okay. Yeah. So you say capitalism, socialism, communism, so have you heard about uh, Scandinavian countries? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, are you ready to pay 70% of... Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you get free education, free healthcare, uh, you work uh, 9 to 3. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> yeah, but, you, but you, you don't get most of your savings behind. You just pick Germany, for example. It's hard to get beyond what they call uh, middle class. No matter how hard you work, you're going, you're going to the They're solving this problem, right? There's nobody, yeah. nobody is on the bell curve, everybody is on the... On the on, on, <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone is straight. <laughs> so, okay, so, so what about like a universal basic income where instead yeah. of bringing up the medium, you just set a floor? Yeah, I mean, it, with, with the increased use of technology, bosses are going to be richer by hiring less people. And the social income thing is actually okay. quite a... Kill every second boss. <laughs> what happened, like, if automation is picking up the right now, yep. I have to understand that automation and AI is, is reaching the ability to outperform humans. Yep. I don't quite agree. I would say that uh, for jobs that are uh, do not that, that are simple to do, that the computer can do. I'm not talking about simple jobs. I'm talking okay. about radiographer identifying X rays to identify yes. cancer. Yes. They've been proven that they yes. are able to do it much better than a human. Okay, agree. How about designing AIs? Now, if I would like to see an AI design another AI. I would be impressed, um, but that, I'm not going to see that. I'm not going to that stage yet, but that's yes. that next room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, right. But the concern is it going to be the people yes. who are in those jobs that are at the higher end of the yeah. income bracket. Yes. The concern is the people who, like, for instance, Singapore says, like, what, 2020 self-driving cars, mm. and you already have people who lose their jobs, they start driving for Uber, which is already a very yes. low floor on income. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then those jobs will be phased out eventually. I mean, yeah. in Pittsburgh, in the U.S., we already have self-driving yes. Ubers now. Yes. Like that. Yes. And, and that's the concern. It's the lower, not not the high. And like I see. AI designers will be fine for a long yeah. time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we're talking jobs, about yeah. Yeah. Like lawyers. Yes. Lawyers. Yes. They yes. will. They will be losing their jobs. I, yeah. I think the main concern there is not lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> 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 question, right? So what's the trend now? Do you have any data? Uh, are more and more people who are less so well off? being, getting to better out, well, is that the trend or is the trend going down right now in Singapore? In Singapore, the trend, uh, I have not really done the data uh, yet. Yeah. I think the trend is that everyone is getting richer in Singapore, I guess, even the poor getting richer, but the, the gap they is get, also yeah. going up, and yeah. the higher the gap, the and the, cars and the tax, right. so you, you'd rather and be, the basic um, food, yeah, necessarily. You'd rather be, um, uh, like at the medium of, uh, in a world full of poor people than rich in a world full of um, very rich people. Yeah. Right? So that's, that's a bit of the problem. So are you saying that the relative trend is worse or getting better in terms of the gap? But let's build that into the trend. Yeah. So if that trend is still showing that it's getting better, even though the gap is getting bigger, yep. we turn it into a number, a coefficient or something, and build that into this trend. Is the trend still going up or going down? If it's still going up, then I think we are okay. We can take, make better steps, right? Do the, it's like piecemeal because it's a system. You can't change those. Yeah. You can only patch it here and there, you know, fix some code, whatever. And then, so that, that's the only way we can do it, I think. But if the trend is going down, then maybe you can ask bigger questions. I think well, just, just to disappoint you, I think anecdotal evidence. Every time I take Uber or Grab these days, uh, all the taxi drivers, the old taxi drivers, they're, they're complaining. They're like, they were my, the amount of money I was making has gone down by 30%. Yep. I don't know, I don't know till what point does it make sense to keep doing this, right? So, so this it is happening. We are not feeling it, but if you ask the people whose jobs are being affected, mm -hmm. I mean, we we are happy because you know we get Uber like you know in less than one minute. Yep. So, so it, it checks my box. Uh, but uh, you know the people who whose who jobs are being taken away and they're being paid less and less. Uh, you know, there's. I mean, if if the rules of the games that we are playing with does not work for a big population, sooner or later they will say that, "Fuck this! I'm not going to play this game," mm -hmm. and and we don't want that point to come. Yep. What, what happens if they don't play the game? So, yeah. I don't think that point is here. I think we're. <laughs> I, I don't think. I don't think we are. I think the Why media not? wants us to think that we're getting there, but I don't think we are. So, 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 but one thing that you brought up was if the trend's going in the right direction, then we're good or we're okay and we should make small changes. But part of a society's goal should be to optimize, like if you're a country, you want to optimize growth. 
when you have this very large separation between the lower end and the higher end, your velocity of money to tends to decrease, and that's bad for growth. So while it's good for the people who keep accumulating capital for a society as a whole, it's not necessarily a good thing. So, so instead of just looking at whether the trend's better, I think the better question is, are you optimizing things? And, and it's more of an optimization problem than yes. just a, what direction is it going? We built that into the trend, or whatever it is. So, <laughs> so I, I, maybe the question is that the formulas are not inclusive of all the factors. I don't know whether it's even possible but for so that. that. People don't believe it until they see it. And then Trump got elected, and now we see <laughs> the, the lower. The, I mean, we know that the lower income people, less educated people, they are not happy about the situation. That's why Trump got so elected. Trump got elected. I sense that you're not happy, maybe a lot of people are not happy, but majority did vote for him. No, no, no. Well, the majority, the majority of the electoral college. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Within that system, within that system, I'm not going to go into the. Uh, but within that system, you know, that it works. And I don't think America is going to collapse because America has a lot of self-checks. No, but but again, stuff. it won't collapse, but it's a question of optimization. Is, is you're not necessarily looking at this thing in a vacuum of whether there's growth or not. But as a country, for instance, you want to maximize, for instance, GDP growth or some metric you can find. And, and instead of just looking at is it growing, I mean, Singapore is growing, but it's rather anemic right now at, at a 1%, 2% or something like this. The, the idea isn't to keep growing along with that. The idea is to optimize. Well, yeah, optimization Ford, Ford would mean right, that because, the like in the Ford Corporation, they like they, they don't just say okay we optimize we automate all the things and then we pay the worker the same amount of wage. Instead, uh, when they automate things, when you know when Ford they cut the people away and give their employees the best health care and then all these benefits. Why does he have? He doesn't have to do that. Yep. But he do that so that his employees can afford to buy the cars, and then they remain happy. So that's that's why it's important to bring up the lower lower um, I don't know income groups of the society so that they can assume uh, they can afford to consume. But that's ideal if the I, that's ideal if the boss is actually giving instead of keeping it all to themselves. But I'm sure that help doing that helped him. That, yeah. that, so that's the point. But well. it also sped up this idea of a velocity of money where it exchanges hands faster. Well, than optimizing helps. means that we even you know, leave the, the rest behind and we will get even better optimization. Could it be that, that we, if we I just mean, focus on optimizing? That tends to not be the case though because GDP growth and, and overall growth tends to also be in part tied to, for instance, population growth. And you're always going to have a lower, you're always going to have a distribution of it. It's just how sharp is your distribution curve. Yeah. Um, and you look at countries like Japan, for instance, whose population growth has stagnated, or lots of Europe, and then you look at how that's correlated to GDP growth. Again, if you're just cutting off the end, you're going to still be replacing people and it gets spread out, and then eventually it'll come to some equilibrium. And the idea is you tune economic policies or social policies to, to change how this equilibrium buys along this curve. And let's also not forget that people with higher income <laughs> that's, that's okay. Well, that's okay. a self <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this discussion here means that you know someone needs to draw a huge spreadsheet with all the numbers in. Then we know what we're talking about. No, no, otherwise, no, no, no. we just have, otherwise we're just advocating some radical change, and that's not what we want. Because as history has shown that when you have radical change. It takes well, maybe even decades for it to get back to where. Yeah, but we we are living a time of radical, experiencing radical change because we are looking at jobs and skills being displaced so quickly. Certain skills, I mean, previously you have a skill, you'll probably you know, last you throughout a lifetime. Now your your skill probably go back 10, 20 years, or even less, or even less, five years. or five years. You know, five years ago, two thousand, you don't really know what cloud is. Computer, computing is now people are asking for you know, top engineers with 20 years of experience. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we are we, we, we are kind of oscillating between like a problem of a single poor person in the street versus a global oh, economic God. trends. I, I think I one thing is actually that <gasps> really one, one thing we need to bear take into consideration when we talk about trends and optimization and all that is also the emotional aspect of yeah. the people you're measuring. Yeah. So even if, however, the direction of the trend is moving, more importantly, the people have to be happy. The, the happiness has to yep. be there. If 
if the trend of the, the, the income is going up and all that, but their, their happiness is going down, they're still going to have a problem. The, the mean the quality of life is not there. I mean, I could bear it. Mm -hmm. yeah. quality of life, but if they don't feel like it's good, you know, like compared to now, uh, the low income groups, the, the quality of life is Test. probably much better than yep. a high income group maybe 100 years ago. Yep. Uh, is it emotional that this is a problem with capitalism? Sort of. Yeah. Before, before capitalism, uh, this is something that I, I have heard. So before capitalism, like say you're a farmer, you are responsible for everything on the farm. You take pride in your craftsmanship. But afterwards, people work in factories, and you don't really see the final. Like you don't, you don't know what's the significance of the bit that you're working on uh, in the grand scheme of things. Like so, then that kind of take the craftsmanship pride yeah. out of the picture, and then you know, like compare someone who's working on an assembly line compared to someone who have their own farm and is free to do to allocate resources and do their own things, I would say the person who owns and runs a farm is happier. So it's a matter of self-satisfaction, I guess. So to some degree, yes, capitalism <laughs> took away. Uh, yeah, I'm not convinced how they use it. Or we can see some sort of retooling of how the economy should work. I, mean, I don't think it's a question of pure capitalism or pure something else. Everything lies along a scale, yep. and then you are again you're tuning what. I mean, I don't think anybody would agree that pure, unfettered capitalism is a good thing. Like, would anyone? Or so so. I mean, we're already not fully capitalism. It's where along the spectrum do you lie? I think breaking into just pure capitalism or pure communism it isn't necessarily productive because those don't actually exist. Yeah, but the and question. Then you're just, I guess, picking somewhere on this. Yeah, the, the, uh, the question we need to ask is like, you know, how do we make this work better? As in, we, we're in an age of abundance. We have a lot of resources, and we produce more than we can consume. But there, we're still having people who are starving and then who who are struggling. We're also so basically unhappy. producing just to be consumed. Right. That is a waste state as well. So, yeah, in a way, we're talking about very high level things that are very difficult to deal with. Right? <laughs> so how about this? And what about the different angle? I mean, how, what do you think is the population of the group that you're referring to that thinks need help in Singapore? Let's just in Singapore. Are we talking about 10,000 people, 100,000 yeah. people? or Let's just put a number on that. What's an estimate with everyone? The Yahoo has published an article <laughs> on the minimum is, I cannot say that as a number, but out of the population with classified PR as Singaporeans who live under a poverty one, at least 100k. 100,000 people in Singapore? Yes, so I think it's more than 100k, but I can be very for sure it's above 100k. So mm. they already have some income, so right? So yes. what about the, the deficit, the difference, yeah? The so how much would that difference be for us to be happy for them? You know what I'm saying? And how do we make it up? And would everyone willing to cut a bit of their pay to do that as a, as a way. Maybe it's not that much, I don't know the numbers. Maybe it's a lot, it's too much, I don't mm -hmm. know, right? And, and let's say we want to do that, yeah? Maybe next year it'll be 200,000 because I want to join them. <laughs> right? Maybe, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? So, so that's a different question. What I'm saying is, so let's try to patch this instead of aiming for high disguise and which, you know, we're gonna have some BS go home and nothing's gonna happen. Yep. So, so, so 100,000, let's put some numbers, yeah? Let's say each needs $500 more, or $1,000 more, let's brainstorm, put some assumptions on. When they say define property, right, is each household and is, uh, is less than 2.4K. 100,000 household or individuals? 100,000 100, people are in poverty, that per household, let's say 4%. So that four, uh, that household at four percent, right? On average, they earn like eight hundred or six hundred uh, per average person, which are not enough. In but those are then there are schemes that government gave that yes, subsidized. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the so yeah. What's the How difference? much income yeah. do they have for London? Uh, is uh they define this specific group uh as property, as property because in order for you to have a proper social life as a proper health care insurance everything like you need a certain income and they do not hit that income well, what is that income do we have a figure since yeah yes. what are we short of yeah you haven't given everything so once we have a number income. right maybe we can look towards the number yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so i i guess he's saying about just now about 600 to 800 so let's take 800 per person so with that time so right so about 2.4 okay household is really okay actually 
not if we have four let's people let's living here. Let's just let's just stick down, yeah. Let's just stick down as a starting point. Yeah, not to the start. Let's say okay, then we are not going to start with two point four k a month. No, 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 it's per household. A household for first person for four people. Divide by divide by four. So how much should we pay for us? Yeah, oh, it so it has to depend on the net. Given subsidy, you don't even pay a single dollar. Uh, without subsidy? Yeah. Of course, but they are talking about subsidy because the government is giving them now. Yeah, but without subsidy? Probably. Because, you know, government doesn't mean they will give all the time. So what are the shortfall then? And you want to get them out of government subsidies, right? I do think that they should be remain in government subsidy for the rest of their life. My my view is there's always going to be a group yeah. above and below, like the bell curve, right? Yes. You know, it exists. So we yeah, we can reduce that and we should, but there's gonna be this group there, right? Yeah. And and if we talk about numbers and, and then we have a figure and annually, you know, we contribute to that, then maybe then the rest of the population can pull away as fast as they can. Yeah. And so what I'm trying to say is like for example, two point four K in a household. Uh, what? Why they are defined as poverty? Because one, they couldn't afford to actually pay their rental without government subsidy of some form, and provide food and transport and education and healthcare. That depends on how they're spending it. If they're spending it like no police business, because no amount of money we give them is going to sustain that. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, the the two point four okay. if you have a household of four people, that's six hundred dollars a person, which is not well, that significant. No, that excluding subsidies. When you have subsidies go a bit below further. Um, I think it's clear that one of the things that we're not even sure is how much should yeah. be enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's not I've, many. I have something to say, sorry. I'm I'm not in the tech industry, I work in the healthcare and social industry. Okay, basically, um, for certain, for most of the government subsidies, you are not automatically entitled to it, even though you're in the poverty um, category. You will need to actually, um, I think someone mentioned, reach out for help, maybe by a social worker or by a case manager in one of like the family service centers or, in, or when you're hospitalized, maybe you're lucky there's a social worker available and basically a social worker will need to um, do a means testing. Even though you are already considered in a poverty, they still need to assess your household income and you need to supply supporting documents like your, your electricity bills, your salary pay slips, which if you are not doing that well, you probably won't have it kept in a nice folder with, with you know, categories. So that's stuff. one way to help the population, yes. right? By reducing all that. Yes, but, but... Nicer process. Yes, but the thing is, in the healthcare industry itself, there is a manpower shortage. So they are not sufficient social workers, um, nurses, therapists, or and even doctors to actually so-called match up to their needs, you know, to the needs of this population. Or even like we don't even talk about poverty, people who are in the poverty category, like middle class people. So because of this, um, you know, there there is still a lot of people who need a lot of help, but sometimes there is system limitations, yeah. And of course, yeah, these are all very high things, so it's so difficult to change the system. But the thing is also in healthcare industry, a lot of people are foreign workers, and it's like, even if they go for skills upgrading, it doesn't necessarily that they get like a higher income as for like Singaporeans, you know, for example, because they are foreign workers and they do get discriminated in our local system, yeah. I mean, it sounds really bad, but this is the reality. And some of them, for them to even like, let's say, move up the you know the social economic status or even the income status, they need to work like maybe for us, like for me, maybe I just work like ten years, but for them, they need to work like twenty years. And of course, um, I, I mean, I don't know why I'm going this, but this is just to just uh, explain the situation based on my experience because I've been in this area for seven to eight years, and it's the same every single year. And where are we going to get all this, um, you know, where are we going to get like uh, equal treatment of foreign workers, you know, and, and how are they going to do it because the system really limits them, yeah. Mm. Well, you actually brought up a very good point about social workers. So we were talking about what we can do, right? So how many of us here have done any social work? <laughs> so, Right, talk to him afterwards and see how we can <laughs> okay, let me point out, I, I know personally someone, a family of six, making 
taking home two k a month, maybe quite can be no. They are not making. Uh, they don't have a, a HD TV screen at home. They don't have air conditioning in their home, but they are living quite contently. So it depends on how you define as what is poverty and what isn't poverty. Uh, if that's the case, you're saying that uh, we can use a benchmark and say that's more. I'm not saying that uh, as my benchmark. I say I know yeah, the school. Yeah, but that, that school of thoughts can be. I'm sorry uh, if I sound uh, disrespect. Uh, that school of thoughts can be nothing to say that as long we encourage that kind of thoughts to all the people who are we define as property, then the problem is okay, is it? No, I'm saying that what how comfortable? Why are we putting it as the guys? Wait time. Oh my God! Thank you. <laughs>